Hey everybody, I'm Ranj, the Bearded Plumber. Thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm going to be showcasing my new diverter cartridge remover that I purchased from First Choice Boilers on Instagram. Uh, to get access to the diverter cartridge, I had to remove the gas valve, the burner and the fan assembly. And by removing these components out of the Ramiya Avanta, I had full access to the diverter valve, which is at the back of the boiler. Here's the tool from First Choice Boilers. It's a nice stainless steel tool and solidly built. And this is my BBB cycling torque wrench. It's uh, six Newton meters and it has a 10 mil socket set on it, which aids in removing the four locking nuts on the burner. And this is the cable for the motor head. As you can see, it's wet and saturated, which I dried using my hairdryer from my van. Trying to remove the retaining clip that holds the motor head in place. But as you can see, it was so badly rusted that it came away in little pieces. And then I even struggled to get the remaining part of the retaining clip out that uh, I gave up and I just ended up smashing it and pulling it off. And by pulling it off like that, part of the motor head is still stuck in the actual diverter valve cartridge. But that doesn't matter at this point because now I was able to fit the new removal tool, this one here, over the cartridge in place. Here's just some of the tools that I used to get the job done. And as you can see, the boiler wasn't in the best of conditions. So I used my Weira Mini ratchet with a 13 mil socket on it to fit on top of the new removal tool. And after giving it some welly, it uh, definitely loosened the cartridge up. And I was able to get the cartridge out without using any grips. Struggling with, you know, I normally would struggle with my Cobra grips to get it open. But uh, using this little tool, the job really was a doddle. It did slip a couple of times because it was rusted quite bad in there. And then there you go. It opened it up really well. So a great investment, I think, you know, for about 20 odd quid, you know, you couldn't get a better tool to get these cartridges out. As you can see, the cartridge has seen a lot better days. It's caked up and obviously the water was penetrating through the pin into the motor head. And it leaked so much that the actual cable to the motor head was even saturated, causing the electrical short in the boiler and blowing the internal 2 amp fuse. Here's a new diverter cartridge, as you can see in much better condition. So basically we just pop the new cartridge into place, no need to lubricate it or grease it up. Put the tool back on in the clockwise position now and turn the ratchet to secure cartridge and make a nice watertight seal. On goes a new motor head. So that's a new motor head. Slightly scratched because obviously it's van stock, but it's a brand new motor head and a brand new retaining clip, which all comes as part of the diverter valve cartridge. So the cable has been dried with a hairdryer, like I said, and I did a continuity test between the cables end to end, and there was no more continuity between the connections. And as you can see, the boiler's seen better days. It's not been serviced for a while, 
and the AAV had been leaking, so I carried out a full strip service, removed all the debris, tried to polish the boiler up to the best I could, got my drill in there and you know drilled it all the way with the spinning brush. And I always pour water into the heat exchanger to flush away any debris. And I also use my Wiesman scraper cleaning tool to clean in between the heat exchanger waterways. And then pour water down it to flush away the debris into the condensed trap. I then remove the bottle trap, flush that out and always put that back as well. And here I am removing the AAV that was leaking. New AAV going on. Bottle trap coming out. Flush it out with water, put it back in. And as you can see, the burner insulation pad is also not in the best of conditions. It was cracked and snapped as soon as I touched it. So I replaced the insulation pad, ignition electrodes, and even the burner door gasket with a new red silicone gasket that is approved by the manufacturers. But again, the gasket comes with the diverter valve cartridge as part of a kit because to change the diverter valve cartridge, you will need to get the burner out. And as you can see, the new one, this one here, was a lot spongier and softer than the first one. So it's always best to replace the door seal. If you're opening the burner up, replace the door seal. And if the insulation pad is in bad condition, replace that as well. It all prevents recalls and greater customer satisfaction. On goes the 10 mil locking nuts and here I'm using a torque wrench that's set to six newton meters so that I don't over tighten the nuts and cause creaking and expansion sounds. New ignition electrodes, gas valve goes back in with new washers. So yep, boiler's back on, pressurized. I was pressurizing the boiler to about 1.4 bar. Turned the boiler back on, let it run through its initial setup program that it does. So it'll flash between F and P mode, checking parameters and checking itself basically. Once that is done, I always carry out my FGA test on a Ramia Avanta on high fire and low fire, the CO2 should be around about 8.8 .8. and obviously parts per million less than 200. And I always test my inlet working gas pressure as well to ensure that there is sufficient gas at the boiler. And there you go. Job done. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe.